Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the custom tool node. And what the custom tool node is, is it's probably about the most complex or one of the most complex and one of the most powerful nodes within Fusion. And it's used to create custom expressions and filters to modify image or images. And this node can be as complex or as easy as you make it. So for some of you out there, we've got some subscribers and I'm talking to you at Bill Young 9538. Some of you are very good at expressions and scripting and some of us aren't. And me being one of them because I don't like math. But in the old days, this is one of the main ways we would do different compositing. Before we had all these nice nodes to do everything for us, we would use math to composite nodes in VFX programs. And uh, me, of course, I had my little cheat sheets for everything I needed to do. But some of you may know this off the cuff or may know a lot more advanced things to do. So for you subscribers out there, anytime you see people like at Bill Young 9538 posting comments, read them because uh, he and people like that really know what they're talking about when it comes to scripting and have some very good input. So thank you and uh, be sure to check out their comments. So the custom tool. So let me go ahead and add a shift space custom tool and I'm gonna add it. And on our custom tool, we've got a plethora of inputs. So right here we have our typical effects mask input. So whatever we input into here is gonna mask off the effect for the entire uh, effect. Here we've got a matte input so we can input a matte. And then we've got three image inputs. So this is image one, the green is image two, and the pink is image three. And then of course we've got an output. So let's go ahead and input our image and let's look at our custom tool. And if we look it up top, it's extremely confusing when you uh, first use it and you've never used it before, but it's actually easier than you think. What's difficult is the uh, expressions we put in here. And this is where I said you need to uh, know math and know what you're trying to do to be able to make this node work correctly. And how this operates is, is it's bringing in images are one, two, and three on independent channels. So we've got the R, G, B, and A channel. Additionally, we've got auxiliary channels. If we have any auxiliary channels coming in on those inputs, but on ours, we only have RGB and A. But what this one means is that means red channel one from image one. So this is all one. If I change that to two, red would be R2 from image two. So for example, like I can change all these to red one. So I'm using my red channel on all of my actual channels. You can see it just, in essence, turn it to a black and white because we've got all of our red channels coming in. So let's go ahead and put that back to the correct colors and image. So it's here where we write our expressions. So for example, if I wrote R1 times N1, and what this N1 means is if we go to our controls, we have different inputs or different ways we can change these expressions. So N1 is number one, N2 would be number two, and P1X would be point one, P1Y would be point one on the Y, and so on. Additionally, we have LUT controls, so we can bring in LUTs. So in essence, I put R1 times N1, so I'm multiplying the red channel times N1. And right now it's multiplying it by zero, so we're not seeing anything. But if I change this, you can see now we're affecting our red channel. And if I go back to channels, a good way to uh, bring in our channels is if we don't want to change these independently, we can just put C1, which means current one. So our current channel coming in. So instead of R1, I'm going to write C1. So let's bring in our red channel so I can copy all this and paste it on each one of our channels. And if I go to our controls, now you can see it's operating like a gain control because it's multiplying N1 by all of our channels. And how the points work, so instead of N1, our number control, say I want to use one of my points. If I put P1X, so now point one X is affecting our red channel. So if I change our little X location here, and that's this input right here, you can see it's affecting our red channel. 
in the way our LUTs work, if I go down our LUTs, we've got our four LUT channels and uh, let's just bring in one. If I go here and I type uh, get LUT R1, I can copy this, paste them, but I can change this to uh, green, change this to blue, and uh, I forgot to put our LUT number because if you notice, we've got LUT1, LUT2, LUT3, LUT4. So I'll have to say get LUT1, LUT1, LUT1. If I go to our controls, now we can now use that as a color curve. And if I want to use LUT2, I just change it to LUT2, LUT2, LUT2. So let's go back to our C1 times N1. And uh, let's just copy all these. And we're back to uh, using this. Now over here in our configure button, and I know I'm jumping back and forth, but that's kind of how this node works. We're going to have to jump back and forth to all this stuff. But under our configure, we can configure how many controls we have. So if I only want two number controls, I can uncheck this. And if I go back, I only have, well, I have three. Let me uncheck. I only have two number controls. The same way with my points. I can only have two if I want. And my LUTs, if I only want two LUTs showing, I can have two. If I go to my controls, I only got two LUTs and two points and two numbers. Additionally, if we wanted to rename some of this, we can just rename it down here. So if I just want to say, yeah, this is N1 and this is N2. If I go to my controls, now it just says N1 and N2. In this random seed, if we have any expressions that have random seeds, this is where we reseed that randomness. So let's go back to channels and uh, see what this kind of does. So let's go ahead and bring in another input. So I've got this text right here that says boxing, and I'm going to input that into image two. So now we have two images coming in. So here I can put C1 times C2. And I can copy that, paste it, and we have uh, got our text composited over our little uh, background there. And if we wanted to bring a third one in, we can bring our other boxing media we've got here. We can bring it into input three. If we go to our custom tool node here, and uh, I'll say this slowly because this is a typical formula. So if we put our C1 times C2 in brackets, and then we say plus bracket C3 times, oops, another bracket, one minus C2, close bracket, close bracket. And we copy all these. We now have image three composited behind image one using image two as our text. So these were all the basic compositing formulas we used to have to use in the old days. So there's other ways to do this as well. So if I wanted to control, say my uh, text within my little first bracket here, I could say C1 times N1 times C2. And if I copy all this, And I push play and I go to our controls. I can use N1 to control the brightness of that uh, text and the composite within that text. Now, if you notice up here, we have these two set up in intermediate options as well. And the way these work is we can create formulas within the setup tab. And these formulas operate on the frame level. And then we can create formulas within the intermediate tab and these operate on the pixel level. And the way these operate is it's going to do all the setup first, calculate everything within our setup, and then calculate everything within our intermediate formulas, and then recalculate it on our channels. So 
it's going to go in that order. So within our setup, we can create a setup and all our setups are S's. So S1, S2, S3, and our intermediate are I1, I2, and I3. And that's how we bring those formulas in. So on this setup, if I wanted to say change the time to automatically use our frames to change that time and set up one, I could type time divided by We've got 190 frames, so 190. And then our channels node and our little formula here, instead of N1, I could use S1. And if I copy this and paste it on every single channel, we're gonna use this little formula here to change our channel. So if I push play, now you can see over time, it's automatically going to uh, fade in from black on our little letters and our composited image on our letters. And let's say I wanted to be able to do that here and control my letters at the same time. I could bring this back to uh, N1, which is our number one control. N, change this to N. And then after all of our formula here, I can just multiply it by S1, and uh, I guess I can just copy and paste all this. So now our background is going to automatically ramp up, and we have the ability to control our text in our composited video on top of that text. So that is the custom tool node. Have fun playing with it, and uh, like I said, as complex as you want to make it is as complex as this node can be. So I will see you in the next node breakdown.